Let's take a look at the best no-code builders of 2025. First is Wix Studio. This no-code provider is focused in for agencies and professionals. If you're looking to build websites for lots and lots of clients, it has a lot of systems ready to go for you to be able to do this. This means that you can publish and update a site in a single click on your own custom domain or even just a dev one. Things like analytics are built in by default and things that are more complex like contact forms can simply be dragged and dropped and their functionality just works immediately. What makes Wix Studio unique as a no-code builder is its drag and drop interface that looks and works similar to Figma. It also has unique AI integrations that I haven't seen in other products, such as responsive AI, making all the different types of content you've created in a desktop view to then work on all devices, including mobile, tablet, and of course the desktop. Wix also has MCP servers, meaning you can do automations through things like Zapier that allow you to connect up an AI straight to Wix and create your own automations. For example, anytime a contact form is kicked off, you can use ChatGPT to send an email straight to a customer. Framer is our next no-code tool, which is made for designers, but originally was created for developers as well. Because of this, it has a huge community with lots of templates and designs, depending on what you're looking for. One of the strengths it has is its ability to have a powerful editor that allows you to do things like zoom in and out and view different viewports all in a single screen. This makes for an enjoyable editing and designing process where the canvas feels like a natural progression from Figma. What makes Framer unique to me is the fact that you can create your own coded components in React. Here you'll get your own ID where you can customize how they work, a preview on the right hand side, and then you can simply drag and drop them straight into your canvas to use, which opens up the possibility to do some really creative things. Framer has also released a AI tool that creates wireframes based on a simple prompt. While good in theory, it doesn't do that great right now, creating the basic same layout for most prompts, and I have seen other tools do it a lot better. Webflow is our next no-code tool. This one is quite popular with developers due to the fact that the ecosystem works very similar to how you would normally develop a website from code, allowing you to have full control over sections, containers, and elements on the page. And it comes with a powerful write inspector menu, which replicates traditional CSS styling in a user interface that makes it easy to edit. So whether I wanna change margins or padding, text alignment or size, it makes me feel closer to how Dreamweaver used to work, allowing me to have a user interface to edit my code. One thing that makes Webflow unique is the fact that you can export your website. Here I've got access to my HTML, CSS, JavaScript, as well as the assets that I've uploaded so I could download this and move this to a completely different no-code provider. Webflow also has a powerful interaction system where you can trigger different events depending on what's happening in your screen, such as here where I've created an event that allows this part of the screen to fade in when I scroll to it, or this button here which has a simple transition that is easy to set up in my styles where I add a hover and a transition effect. Webflow also has a large marketplace of apps you can connect up and this lets you orchestrate some pretty powerful automations if you know how to do so. I'm going to use Zapier as the example again so we can see how they work in different environments. For Webflow you get a lot more control over what types of triggers cause what types of reactions. I'm going to create one here that when a new comment comes in I get a email and here I can pull out value data such as the content or the author name and structure the email exactly how I want. And then this just simply runs in the background whenever I get new comments on my website. Our next no-code builder is Squarespace. It was started in 2003 as a blog hosting platform and has evolved into a platform that I can only describe as it's all done for you. And this shows in the sign-up process where you immediately get to create a site, select what sections and pages it'll have, what color and topography, and then you're immediately taken to it. What makes it unique as a no-code builder is this ability to open up the field of web design to practically anybody who has a mouse and keyboard. However, the drawback is that as a designer or a developer, you're kind of limited to what is available to you through the options. You can't easily just create your own React component or have a powerful right-hand inspector to customize elements exactly how you need. You kind of have to work with what you have. But this trade-off means that you can publish a site in minutes, if not hours, rather than days, weeks, or months. Nothing comes free and you would need to upgrade your site to a paid plan to even view it publicly online if you are creating on Squarespace. Duda is our next no-code builder and it's one that I appreciate because of the fact that they allow you to use code in your no-code setup. 
Started in 2009, its goal was to make mobile responsiveness easy. It fits in a space between something like Squarespace, which gives you limited functionality, and Wix Studio, which gives you a lot more freedom. What I found made it unique is this ability to edit the raw code of any element. Here, for example, I can see the HTML and CSS of this hero section, and I can customize it. This means it kind of works like a code block, but not only that, it feels a lot more developer friendly since I know exactly what I'm doing when I'm working working in environments like this. And if that wasn't enough, there's an entire developer mode where it pulls out the website with a raw HTML and CSS so I can view the pages almost like a code editor. It still has other things like a inspector on the right hand side so you can customize things visually as well as a left hand menu to see all your layers and add and modify different things there too. Duda also has a pretty rich ecosystem of templates and designs and sections which you can use to customize your layouts. And once you're happy with your design, you can preview it and publish it all in a single click to have publicly available online on one of their custom domain names, making it easy to share with clients and people online. Next, we have Loopool. Compared to other no-code or low-code website tools, this one's only been around for a couple of years. It does have the benefit of helping you design websites in things like Bootstrap, Tailwind CSS, as well as directly with React. While this sounds good in theory, there are some limitations once I started actually editing in their tool. There's only a few templates to select from, and while these are made quite well, you're locked into how they are designed. There's a lot less modification that you can do with elements on the page. The inspector on the right hand side only gives you access to things like class names and variables like the text themselves to modify, and there is no additional inspector other than this. You can select from pre made designs that are located on the right side here that you can drag in and drop into the frame and these populate just like this and you can also edit the code if you're using Tailwind CSS for example where you can see the low code version of this component. This does mean that if you are a designer and you're trying to design elements you're not going to do this without some coding knowledge and even if you are a coder sometimes it's easier just to work in an IDE than in this sort of environment. You also can't download your project unless you have some sort of a subscription. If you decide not to use Tailwind or Bootstrap but use React instead, you'll find that the components are locked down even further. As now I can't edit the code, the only thing I can edit are props that are passed down to this component itself. Loopool does come with a new AI website builder as well, and I did give this a test to try and see what it comes up with, but most of the designs were pretty generic based on just pre-made templates with a bit of customization for the text itself. Elementor is also a no-code slash low-code website builder. However, it's a little bit different than all the rest since it's not standalone and built on top of WordPress as originally a plugin that was created in 2016. And this is no surprise as WordPress was infamous for being difficult to design and work with. However, However, its reliance on WordPress means that you can't get a version of Elementor up and running without having WordPress installed locally or in the cloud and without having a paid subscription to Elementor. They've recently come out with a new AI tool that creates sitemaps and wireframes that is completely separate from the WordPress ecosystem. I gave this a shot by asking it to create a clone of YouTube. However, the results weren't thrilling since it didn't come up with a design that looked anything like YouTube, nor did the colors, text or background work at all. All. During this video, I tried a lot of other no-code tools that were hyped to be quite good, but a lot of them didn't work, like Builder, which didn't load or Unbounce, which couldn't be used without a paid subscription. The same with Lead Page, which looks good on the landing page, but again, I can't access it without using a credit card. And I tried others like Tilda Publishing, which did let you access them, but their interfaces were so complex and difficult to work with that they're not worth using.